I want to turn to the war between Israel and Hamas in, in Gaza. What is your view of this war? I think when you call it a war, you're doing a disservice to the people who are having their limbs blown off by some of the most advanced technical weaponry on the planet. It is a genocide and it is disgusting. And it doesn't matter which side of the political spectrum you fall on. When you observe a genocide in front of your very eyes, you should be disgusted. Which side is waging genocide? The Israelis are genociding the Palestinians and you know it as well as everybody else does. I don't know does. that. Well, then it seems like your bosses are not allowing you to know it. What perhaps. do you think of, of what Hamas did on October the 7th? Why are you starting the story in the middle? I Pierce? didn't. I just asked you about the wider war. I'm now asking I can't professionally, about Hamas. I cannot professionally answer that question without talking about the context that led up to October 7th. Well, nothing, to my mind, justifies what happened on October the 7th. Nothing justifies what happened before October the 7th, Piers. Mm. This is the exact point. So you're talking to a man. I don't know what answer you expect from me, because mm. let's forget the fact that I'm a Muslim. You're talking to a man who is fighting oppression to the best of his ability because he believes that the people in charge of the world are enslaving us all to the point where I detriment my own life. I end up in a jail cell because I'm speaking against oppression. Then you're asking me what I I would do if my family was you're blown not in a to jail. pieces. You're not in a jail. Hang you're on. asking you're me not... what I would do if another government Andrew, came along and blew my family to pieces? You weren't put in a jail cell because of any oppression. Absolutely I was. No, you weren't. Of course you I were was. You were put in jail cell because you've been accused of serious sexual crimes. I would crimes. not have been accused if I was not monumentally successful in speaking the truth. Let me ask you again. It's a simple question. Some people can answer it straight away, including pro-Palestinians people I've had on my program. Many are very quick to say absolutely. Do you believe Hamas are a terror organization? And that's a very interesting question, but I think you're peddling asininities. Well, just answer the question. Can somebody do me a favor? Google asininities and find out if it's a I word. know what it means. If it's not, make sure it's added to Webster on top G's orders. Okay, just, are they a terror group? You're peddling asininities because I'll tell you why, Pierce. Let me answer the no, question. No, I'm not. Of course you it's are. It's a simple question. That's like me asking. I'll tell you why I asked, because the let, UK, let, where you were born, prescribes Hamas as a terror They also prescribe me as dangerous to children in schools. Let me explain something to you, Pierce. You're not if prescribed sit, as that. If I were to sit here and say, is stealing wrong? And you'd say yes, and i go, ah, but what if the person stealing is trying to feed their family and if they don't, their family are gonna die? Is it still wrong? You're trying to take a so very equating... nuanced and complicated argument no. and reduce it down to no, one not. sentence, no, which not. is failure. You're trying to equate stealing with a mob of terrorists breaking over a border going to peaceful... Is that what Israel did? Wait a minute. A mob of terrorists Wait a minute. over a border and, and killing people. Is that going, what Israel did? Going through a border on October the 7th... Oh, October the 7th. Uh, massacring young people at a festival, massacring families in their homes in a kibbutz, setting fire to them, cutting their heads off, killing babies. Oh, killing it was 40 the most, babies. That was true. Well, fine. Were the babies vaccinated? Why are you being flippant? I'm not being flippant. The point I am making... I don't making, find that funny. No, but the point I am making is that the media lies, firstly. No, no. Secondly, I can secondly, ask you. We can ask... I can ask you about different things at the same time, right? Sure. So I'm asking you, first of all, specifically, what is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? Sure. I'll answer the question professionally. I do not condone the loss of human life on either side. Mm -hmm. I think anybody doing anything which directly damages civilians is disgusting and abhorrent. However, I would be an amateur if I could not sit and pretend I do not understand the motivations behind either side. This is not even me taking a side. I understand why Israel is doing what it's doing. I understand why Palestine is doing what it's doing. However, I still call the Israeli actions absolutely abhorrent and genocidal. Okay, we're going to come to Israel's actions, I promise you. We will ask that question specifically. But in terms of what Hamas did on October the 7th, do you accept that was an act of terrorism? It's an interesting question because once it's not again, really. It is. It's no, a very it straightforward question. Because you're the person who would have called Nelson Mandela a terrorist while he was still in jail. And one person's terrorist is another person's freedom fighter. I wouldn't for have me to answer that. the question. Yes, you would have. For, the, for me to answer the question, I have to be very professional, Pierce. For me to sit on the outside in Romania with no personal involvement in Israel-Palestine, it's easy for me to say, yes, it was an act of terror. However, if I was in Gaza, if I was in an open-air prison, if my family had been annihilated by bombs from mm. the sky, mm. if everybody I knew had suffered the loss of a loved one, if I had no chance of any kind of freedom or democracy or standard of life, would I believe it was an act of terror or would I believe it's an act of resistance against oppression? You have to be very careful how you answer these so questions. So what do you think? I think I understand what happens when you take people and put them in such an inhumane condition. So For anybody easy. to sit and say that you're going to take people and put them in absolutely inhumane conditions mm. and give them no standard of life and they're not allowed to ever fight back or they are But I can agree with you. Anyone who well, does that is an amateur. I can agree with you 
that the plight of the Palestinians for many decades has been absolutely shameful. So what did we no, think was going to happen, wait, Pierce? No, nothing justifies what happened on October the 7th. So what are they nothing, supposed to do? Nothing. So what are they supposed to that do? That was an act of medieval barbaric terrorism. Nothing justifies it. Did they suffer and your acts attempt of to, medieval... Your, did they suffer your acts of medieval barbaric... Did they suffer acts of medieval barbaric terrorism before that date? Yes. And it's unfortunately an eye for an eye T in this world. Tell me, I'm not condoning. Give me, I'm being a professional and answering give to me you one why example, it happened. Give me one example of where Israel, without any provocation, <laughs> went into... Well, no, wait, a specific question. Went into Gaza and massacred 1,500 innocent people, cutting their heads off, taping and boasting about what they'd done back to their families in Israel, kidnapping Holocaust survivors... Bringing them, they wouldn't, of course, have done that in their case, kidnapping old grandmothers and bringing them back to Israel, kidnapping babies, kidnapping children. When has Israel actually gone in and done something of the scale of October the 7th? There's literally endless examples of that. Give me Pierce. one. In 2014, they were bombing civilians. Give me, no, and you no. know what? Pierce, let me tell you something. I'm not talking, I'm not about, no, no, I'm not talking about what they were let categorized me. as retaliation for rocket strikes. And there's an arguable point, as there is, for example, I'm vehemently against the expansion of the settlements on the West Bank. I think there are legitimate questions about the proportionality of Israel's response here. Yeah, legitimate but in terms, questions. But in terms of what Hamas perpetrated on October the 7th, there is no, no, no instance of Israel doing that to the people of Gaza. The re first and you first. have to accept that. No. If you don't accept that, you're either deluded or you're deliberately not wanting to say the obvious, which is that was an act of terrorism, because you're concerned about upsetting people in Palestine. Is that, is that the case? Let me go back to my first point when I said you're peddling asininities. The reason I said that is because to look at a situation, no matter how heinous, and to ignore all of the context and pretend that you do not understand why said situation happened is in Nothing is justifies asinine. terrorism on that scale. Nothing. Is, is asinine. No, no, it's not. It Hamas, is. Hamas, because it's not you, about justification. Let me tell you why. Pierce, it's not about justification. Let me tell you, no, it's no. about understanding the realities let of me, the world. Let me tell you the reality of the world. Hamas came to power in 2005. Hamas's initial founding charter made it clear that they are for the eradication of Israel. And on October the 7th, they prove what that means is they will kill every Jew they can get their hands on. They are an existential threat to people in Israel and to Jewish people. And that is, I'm afraid, the purest personification of a terror group. I also think by doing what they did, as they have done since 2005, they weren't representing innocent Palestinian people in Gaza. Who are suffering they, now. they knew, yes, but Hamas knew when they did what they did that Israel would respond the way they did and that thousands of innocent Palestinians would get killed. They knew that and they still did it. So my question for you is why can't you, which is my position on this, is very straightforward. What Hamas did was an act of terror. An absolutely despicable act of terror and should be called exactly what it is. And they are now demonstrably a terrorist group. That is why they were rightly prescribed that by the UK and America and other countries. And to try and pretend they're not makes you sound like Jeremy Corbyn. And I can't think of a worse insult to throw at you, right? So <laughs> I don't so, think me and Corbyn so, agree on but that. But I also think there are legitimate questions to come about the way Israel's responded. We can come to that. But I just want to ask you one more time. Is what Hamas did on October the 7th an act of terrorism? I think, Pierce, it is peddling asininities for you to pretend that enslaving people... So you sound people... like Jeremy Corbyn. Now. No, let me answer the question. Fifteen times he refused to answer the let question. Let me answer the question. You're now up I'm to about... I'm refusing. You're now if about you three or four. If you are they a terror group or not? They're one team's freedom fighter, and they're deemed a terrorist group. What do group. you think? I think that if you lock people in an open-air prison and steal their land, they're going to retaliate. So they're not a terror group? I think they're going to retaliate. They're not a terror group? One team's terrorists is another Okay, we're now up to about fighter. eight. Are they a terror group? And also, another thing I want to make clear to you, Pierce. Only Jeremy Corbyn has done this. Done what? Refuse to answer the question. I think that what they are doing is seemly deemed an act of terror by the people that the terror... Don't use Weasley words. They're not Weasley. Of course the Israelis think they're a terror group, and of course, some, of course the Palestinians Actually, think they're freedom fighters. Most it's of stupid the, that you're asking the question. Most of the civilized clear. world thinks they're a terror group who committed an act of terrorism. It's not difficult. What they did was an act of terrorism. And I think that if Israel continues to, uh, con to conduct to, acts of terrorism I'm going to on the Palestinian people, they're going to do nothing I'm but strengthen come, the reaction. I'm going to, well, that's a different conversation I'm about to have with you about Israel's response. But before I get there, one more time, is Hamas a terror group who committed an act of terrorism. I think that when you lock people in an open air prison, you're going to have okay, to expect you're not going to retaliation. You're not no, going because to I have to. There's people who are firstly, first things I want to say. To Pierce. If you don't mind me saying, I think it's spineless. Sure, I do. That's fine. You sound like Jeremy Corbyn. Well, that that is an. Did insult. you see my interview with him? No. Right, fifteen times last week, 
I asked him the same question. 15 times he prevaricated and wouldn't answer. Eventually, when someone does that enough times, you know what they really think. Okay. You don't think they're well, a terror let, group. Well, let me answer You don't think they're a terror group. No, what I think is this. On certain Because I'd be really curious what you think an act of terror is if it's not massacring 1,500 innocent people. It's not Including that. Holocaust survivors, Pierce. kidnapping babies, Pierce. decapitating Pierce. people, cutting their limbs Pierce. off, raping women. Yeah, talk about missing limbs. We're going to talk about that when we talk about what we Israel have done. But so when we get there, it'll be in the context of you not admitting that was an act of terror. Well, let me answer the question for the final time. I am a realist. And as a realist, sometimes you do not come to the conclusion of labeling good guys and bad guys. The world is not black and white. Oh, oh no, Hamas are no, bad guys. No. The world is not black and white. The world is actually very gray. Mm. Anybody who sits and thinks there's nothing clearly a good about guy, what, there's nothing there's gray about what Hamas did. And clearly a bad guy does not understand how the world works. And as a realist, what you do is you look at scenarios and you understand why they happen, how unfortunate they are, how unfortunate the loss of human life is, mm. how civilians die on both sides, how innocents are dying in a okay. chess game played by the elites on both sides. Okay. Both sides, you have innocent people who didn't even vote for the person making the decisions, who are ensuring their death, signing their death warrants. It's unfortunate on both sides. Okay. But listen, sir, you would not advocate Russia doing any of the things to Ukraine that Israel is doing to, 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 to Palestine. You would not Sorry, sit Russia here. has been doing exactly that. Russia has Ukraine. not done a fraction Russia of the things illegally, to Ukraine Russia, that Israel has done Russia, to Palestine. Russia illegally invaded a sovereign democratic country and has committed a barbaric rampage, trying to seize as much of Ukraine as it can, bombing maternity hospitals, Let me ask killing you a innocent women Let me and ask children. You a question. Right? Don't even try and have some kind of no, no. This is equivocation of this. I will. A Hamas rocket, a tiny Hamas rocket that can make a pothole in the road, mm. and then they get hit back with cruise missiles. Let me ask you a question. Ukraine sent a drone and it hit the Kremlin. A drone attack, it did nothing, it damaged some, some shingles. Mm. If, if Russia decided to then respond with a missile attack on a hospital and annihilate 800 people, it has been. do you think that would be allowed? So exactly what it has been. Would you advocate have you for seen, that? Have you seen would the, you support that Have reaction? you seen the state of Mariupol, would which you, they leveled to the ground? The Ukrainians did level it, the Russia, correct. The, no, the Russians 2014. Did. The Russians the level Mariupol. And, and my question to you is, would you advocate those reactions? Let me ask you another question, Pierce. No, this is I'm, a genuine okay. question. Let me ask you a question, because I want to understand no, your point of view. It's actually my you, interview of you. Yeah, so but, but you tried to understand mine. I just want to understand your point of view. Mm -hmm. if, if I believed, or if Israel believed, that one of the people in your house was mm -hmm. a terrorist and decided to destroy your entire house and kill your entire family, mm -hmm. would you sit and say, well, maybe there was a terrorist inside. I accept that. Or would you be enraged? Genuine question. I don't think you can take an individual person's response. Well, it's a bunch of individual as, people in Gaza. A, yeah, They're sure. people, individuals with right, thoughts and dreams come. and aspirations Fine. which are being annihilated. 15-year-old um, girls without legs because of cruise missiles. No, let's come they to that. They are individual people. Let's They're not cattle, Pierce. Let's come to They're that. They're people. Right, and so were the people in Israel on October the 7th. And that's why it's so heinous, which right. is my exact point. But not heinous enough to reach your bar of terrorism. Let's it's move not about reaching bar of terrorism. Move, no, it's understanding why not, things happen. By not saying it, you've made your position clear. Just as Jeremy Corbyn did and to pretend you're any different is ridiculous let's move on to israel's response because there are legitimate questions about this hamas embeds itself 35 40 000 terrorists in my estimation you can call them whatever you like um, and they're embedded amongst the civilian population predominantly in northern gaza they we know from intelligence over the last intelligence. 20 years intelligence which you won't believe because the matrix has made it all up correct but we know from intelligence that historically hamas likes to embed itself particularly around things like schools and hospitals yes. and mosques okay. because that makes it more difficult yeah. if uh, the israelis attack yeah now israel has killed nearly 12,000 people <laughs> in its response right there are many people around the world demanding a ceasefire who think that is a ridiculously disproportionate it's response genocide. to what happened well it was genocide they would want to kill everyone in palestine they don't they just want to drive them all out whereas hamas do want to kill every jew that is actually what genocide is you know what's actually interesting because you've spoken about this subject with people more who actually understand the conflict better than i do mm. muhammad hijab understands it better loki understands it better i'm talking from a very general humanistic perspective because I don't understand the absolute intricacies like they do. Do you know what genocide means? Of course I do. Right. It's genocide means you want to eradicate an entire people based on race or ethnicity. Israel clearly doesn't want to do that to the Palestinian oh, clearly, people. Clearly not. If it did, it wouldn't tell a million of them, as it turned out, who moved south. Now, there are arguments about whether To attack them as they moved. Well, some people got hit as they moved. Oh, some people got hit. Yes. Some people got hit. You know what, You know Andrew? what happens? You know what, Andrew? Wait till it's your son, son. You know what, I Wait till it's your I son. I agree. And you know what, Andrew? 
War is horrific. It's horrific. The question is, is it a just war for Israel to go after Hamas? And if it is, and you believe as I do, they, Hamas has to be got rid of, how do you do that? It's if very... you don't do it the way Israel is, is doing it, how do you get rid of that terror group? It's... Now, you won't agree with anything they're doing because you can't even categorize them as a terror group. No, the reason I won't agree with them is because I'm a human, Pierce. And please let me answer this without being interrupted. Mm. You didn't answer my earlier question for a reason because you knew that you couldn't answer it without which, which proving question? my point. The question about the fact that if they decided to cruise missile your house because mm. they thought somebody inside was a terrorist, you would not accept the loss of your family that you have raised. You would not accept that. Of course that. I wouldn't. Okay, absolutely. So let me answer this as a professional. What's funny is I'm a humanist. A like I said, a professional what, by the way? A prof the professional. What Please does that let me mean? answer. Let me answer. What are you? At? What are you I'm speaking? A, you I'm say a you're speaking to professional. And I'm talking about this from a humanistic perspective, mm. right? And like I said, you've talked about pe you've talked to people more knowledgeable than me on the details of the subject. Right. Listen to me very carefully. I thought we lived in a democratic society. You just had 35,000 Hamas terrorists, and this is the thing that's most upsetting to mm. me. This is what genuinely upsets me. Israel intelligence will say a guy's a Hamas terrorist. Has that guy gone to a court of law? Has there been a democratic process? Has he been proven to be a terrorist? No. They've just decided from their intelligence that couldn't see an invasion coming from hundreds of miles away. So this intelligence is actually no. It's not. It's no, not no, great. No. So they've decided no, no. this person might be an intelligence without court case, without any kind of democratic process, and because of that, they've decided to annihilate civilians along with him and it's all just collateral damage and nobody should care that is not a humanistic perspective and that is disgusting and any person in the West would call... who is advocating for that is a hypocrite and because you... if it was turned on them right. if, it, if the American government said we think the person in your shopping mall one of the people you were shopping alongside in the mall might have committed a crime we didn't take them to court we think they might have so we killed your whole family right. get over it so the last is a, time is a clown and a hypocrite so the last time what do you you expect full-grown men to I'm do? About to respond. What do you expect full-grown men to do when you kill all of their families and leave them locked in an open Let air prison? Let me respond. The last time that Jewish people faced an existential threat was in World War II, and the Nazis, who wanted to take over the world and kill every Jewish person, the Nazis were ultimately defeated by Winston Churchill leading the Allies, and Winston Churchill, in the process of defeating the Nazis killed a lot of German innocent civilians in the process. Do you think that was justified? Let me ask a question. Was it, well, no, I asked the questions. Was it justified? Sir, I believe, and let me just get this right in my head. Yeah, think about it. No, I'm, I don't need to think about your question. I believe that the Nazis, which were obviously heinous, I'm not advocating anything they did, it was disgusting, the Nazis. I'm glad we beat them. I'm actually a huge well, they fan. Yeah, they were. Right. So. I believe that they So were, when you massacre Jewish people, you're terrorists. When you Except when you do it in Israel. When you try and conduct genocide on a populace because you don't want them on land you say is yours, mm. then you are terrorists. It's exactly what Hamas did on October exactly the 7th. Exactly what Israel had did before that. So you've literally just described what Hamas do. You just described what Israel do. Mm. They're trying to genocide the Palestinians as we speak. And this mm. is the exact point. So, to so here, Israel... No, but to see here... Hang here, on, so you think Israel are terrorists? I think that what they're doing now is disproportionate and genocidal. Is it terrorism? It's genocidal, so I guess that makes it terrorism. It's right. genocidal. So they're terrorists for responding to an act of terror, but the people who committed the act of terror are not terrorists. The way in which they're responding. You see is the not problem in that argument? No. I really? I, Pierce, what they are doing Slaughtering now. Slaughtering 1,500 people in the way they did it is not an act of terror by terrorists, but a response from the people who are on the receiving end, rather like the response did of the Allies did you say in World 12, War II people? to what the Nazis did, that apparently is the only act of terrorism. Didn't you say 12,000 people the Israelis have killed thus far? Yes. I saw a video of a 15-year-old girl with no legs begging to die. Yeah. She was begging to die saying, I have no future because my parents are gone or my legs are gone. It's I horrific. have no future. No, but you say that, right? You talk about numbers and statistics mm -hmm. and you say a few people got caught. You don't think of Gazans and you don't think of as Muslims and Palestinians as individual people. Oh, yes, I do. No, you don't. Because oh, if you I did, do. If you oh, did, I do. If you did, you oh, would no, not be happy with what's happening Don't you dare here. say that about me. Well, okay, then don't no, group no, no. them together in numbers. No, no. They're I've not spoke, numbers. I've spoken for many years about the plight of the Palestinian people. I think it's outrageous that Israel has any control over their ability to function with water, with fuel, with uh, other energy, and so on, and okay, food. And that's so on. interesting. It so is if wrong. you were in Gaza as a Gazaian male yep. of masculine fighting yep. age, and you believed the things you currently believe, yep. what would you do about it? I'm just asking. You know what? Nothing justifies the terrorism we I saw never said you'd be a terrorist. I'm asking what you do. No, no. I understand why people in Palestine feel oppressed. I understand why they want freedom. I understand why they want the same rights as the people in Israel. Then here's a perfect... On that, on that okay. we agree. Absolutely, but nothing, we agree. But nothing, nothing 
justifies what happened in October. Well, here's where, we, here's where we disagree, Piers, because as a professional, when we both agree on the point that the people inside of Gaza are being oppressed mm. and that their life is being detrimented yep. and that they have no way of getting out, yes. we as a professional, and I, I do agree with that. I understand pressure cookers explode. Mm. You're pretending they shouldn't. You're saying that they should never explode. Nothing bad should ever I'm happen. saying nothing justifies we just, terrorism. We should just be allowed to subjugate them no, for no. endless years here's and my, nothing happens. No. And I'm a realist to understand that pressure cookers explode no, you're not, and that's what happened. No, you're not. We need a solution to the problem or actually, it will continue to You're not a realist because actually you are not accepting that what they did on October the 7th was an act of terrorism by terrorists. You won't accept that. You think actually they're freedom fighters doing some kind of resistance. And I say that is ridiculous and shameful. That's the difference between us. I understand that pressure cookers explode, Pierce. Right. So you think it's perfectly reasonable what happened there? I don't think it's reasonable. I think it's, I think it's a shame. Natural consequence. I think it's a shame. Mm. A shame. That's it? I think, I think it's a shame that we're living in the world now where people are reduced to basically suicide, mm. to try and fight for freedom for their families if they have one left. Mm. Because they all committed suicide, those men who did that. Well, the Hamas, they, didn't have a, they didn't have a chance of survival. I think when you well, that's because they that's because they believe that their martyrs themselves are no, going to a better life. because when you oppress people to the point where their family's dead and they have nothing to live for. Mm. So and you, I think that's a shame. So you su do you support Islamic fundamentalism? Absolutely not. Mm. Do you support an Islamist ideology? Absolutely not. Right. What I support... So why do you support Hamas? I support justice in the universe. Do you support universe. Hamas? I support justice in the universe. Do you support Pierce. Hamas? No. You don't? I, well, I don't know the ins and outs of Hamas's creed. I have to be very honest. Well, you know what they did on October the 7th. Do you I, support I, them? I understand why that happened, and right. I'm saying it's a shame. But you won't denounce them. I say it's a shame. Will you condemn them? I'm, I, I can't sit here and condemn the obvious wow. outcome of, of wow. consequence. Really? How can I, I condemn... You can't condemn Hamas for what they did. Well, we know what's going to happen. And we need a solution. You're here. very quick to condemn Israel's response, but you won't condemn the terror attack which prompted it. No, I'll tell you why. Even though Hamas knew by doing what they were doing, that would be the response. Do you think they knew that? Of course they knew that. Do you think they knew the Israelis? They did it quite deliberately. You know why? Because they were funded and supported by Iran. They didn't like the fact that Israel was normalizing relations with a bunch of Arab countries, from the UAE to Bahrain to Morocco, and then coming down the line was going to be Saudi Arabia. That was a threat to the Iran view of what should be happening in that region. Iran are the ones who support and fund and arm Hamas, and they uh, clearly, in my estimation, it hasn't been probably established yet, but clearly Hamas couldn't have done this on their own. They've done it with support from Iran and they've gone and they committed an act of such heinous atrocity that they knew what the response would be. And that means that they sentenced in that moment, not just 1,500 people in Israel to death in the most appalling ma manner possible, but they also sentenced to death thousands and thousands of innocent Palestinians, including many innocent children, because half the population are children, and Hamas knew that was what was do going you, to happen. You, so my question is, do you how agree? can anyone think Here's, that Hamas is a force for good I didn't for the say Palestinian they're a force people? For good. They I are a force for I said they're unfortunate. No, I didn't say they're a force for good. I said it's a pressure cooker and it's a shame. But you won't even condemn let me, ask, let me ask the question. Do you think if we gave the Palestinian people basic human rights that Hamas would find it more difficult to recruit new soldiers? Uh, I, yeah, look, I think probably. The, I think probably if we treat them like humans, I think, I, this won't happen. I think the so we agree, and let's move on. I think there's a real danger in the scale of Israel's response that you radicalize a whole new generation Agreed. of Palestinians. I think that's a real danger. So and perhaps, I, and so by the way, I've said that. We can agree on so that. So perhaps it was Israel's actions before October 7th that radicalized the soldiers who invaded. So you agree with me. So let's move no, on. No, I don't. No, nothing, just justifies, nothing justifies what they did. Just Let me did. ask you about the reaction that you've had from uh, certain people who I think at one stage uh, you had a, a, a good relationship with. Sure. One is um, Jordan Peterson yeah. and the other one Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Let's talk about Jordan first. Sure. Well, you, you've had a bit of a to and fro with him, but what is your view of him? I think Jordan and I actually agree on many issues. I think the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I think we have a lot more in common than we have that we disagree on. We have different views of the world on certain things. I think we approach him from different places. He's far more in his mind, whereas I live in more in a physical realm than he does. I have nothing against Jordan. I don't dislike him. I do find it, and I must be honest, a bit disingenuous and hypocritical that he speaks mental strength and then ends up addicted to an antidepressant. I don't think you should ever take antidepressants ever. I've been through worse than what he's been through, and I didn't take a single drug. However, I have nothing against the guy. He says very intelligent things, and I'd be interested to argue with him or discuss or debate with him, but I think we'd actually agree on most points, to be honest with you. I don't think we... I mean, he may be unhappy with somehow how I've lived my life and some things I've done, but we've already discussed the fact that I come from the lowest income area of the UK, and most people around me were selling drugs, so at least I didn't do that. 
So I'm not going to allow somebody who's a professor in a university who's had an easy life come along and tell me how people from the streets should survive. You have to find a way out. Let's get rich or die trying. But I have nothing against the guy. I just think that he's been a bit hypocritical. And then, truthfully, the only time I've been genuinely a bit appalled by any of his actions was the tweet he made on Israel-Palestine when he said, give them hell. I know that's an easy thing to say, and it's an expression that people use, and they throw it around flippantly. But I think when you actually wish hell upon other human beings, I think it's a disgusting thing to do, because hell is that 15-year-old girl with no legs, and her parents were dead. Well, hell and is you see her crying her eyes out, begging to die. Mm. That is hell. And I don't think you should genuinely wish hell on anyone, Israel or Palestinian, either anyone. I'm a humanist. I don't want anybody to die. Well, he did, he and did, when he was wishing hell on an entire he did, population... He did express regret for the way he phrased it. And he tweet. should, and because he it's disgusting. 20... I've not wished hell on the Israelis. Mm. I've not wished hell on the Israeli state. I don't want any Israeli civilian to go through with that 15-year-old Palestinian girl's going through. Not a single one. He said about you, Jordan Peterson, I'm not particularly happy to be grouped with Andrew Tate. I think there are some elements about what he does that are quite reprehensible. I'm sure he has. I'm not, I don't know everything he says, and mm. he may disagree with some of my point of view. As I said, I have nothing against him. I don't think anything he says is particularly wrong. I think that he's hypocritical because of the antidepressant problem, and I think that the fact he wishes hell on other humans because he gets emotionally involved in a conflict, which within two minutes of it sparking off, he's wishing genocide. Mm. I think that says a lot about his personality. But overall, when he speaks at length, a lot of the things he says are pretty well thought through and pretty constructive. I have nothing against the guy. Let me turn to Ben Shapiro. He said, let me assure you, as someone who's not pimped women and bragged about it, the morality requires that those who rape women and kidnap women must be eradicated, not negotiated with. He says, on my show, I won't be lectured on morality and toughness by Andrew Tate. His great idea of toughness and morality is pimping women and bragging about it on air and then trying to quasi walk it back while simultaneously maintaining many of the same positions and flexing his biceps. Listen, everyone should be able to tweet whatever it is they want. I'm more for an open discourse, even with people who I think are dead wrong on a lot of issues. But Andrew Tate is dead wrong on a lot of these issues. And the particularly ridiculous posturing about being a, yes, you're very tough when you want people to make peace with terrorists who just murdered their children, very, very tough. What do you say to that? So Ben is a warmonger. Ben has been wrong on basically every single issue you can name. He was with you with the vaccine and, and every other war. Ben is always calling for other people's young men to go and die in some war. He seems to love it. I don't know if he has short man syndrome, but he's always behind his desk calling about how important it is that big, strong men like me go and die. And the reason he tweeted that and said that is because when Hamas and Israel, the very early in the conflict, I think it was three days in, were discussing possible peace talks, he tweeted, no, absolutely not, f them, kill them all. And I said, I said, Ben, as a man who's done his own fighting, because I've had a life of pain and violence, listen to me, peace is always worth a conversation. What I said is that we should always be prepared to at least discuss peace. He, because he's a warmonger, said, no, peace is not worth a conversation. You're this, you're that, da-da. Because he's always sitting behind his desk, he must have a booster chair, and he's always running his mouth trying to invoke violence and call for war. And I find it kind of hypocritical because a man who's so small he would die if he was slapped on the street, sitting behind a desk and screaming for other people to be annihilated, I think is kind of... It's worse than I actually critical. think, I believe... It's insane. I believe if he was sitting here listening to this, he would say that what he's screaming for is for Jewish people in Israel to defend themselves. And all he's a Jewish ben man. All Ben does is call for war. And I agree. Defending yourself... That's not is, all he does. That's all he does. It's and calling for war... And, call, and defending yourself is very different than genocide. And Ben, like I said, overall, most of Ben's worldviews and mine probably align. We don't align on the religious sect. We don't rely on the religious points. Fine. But our overall worldviews about how society should function probably align on many of the key issues. I'm not, I don't have a beef with Ben, and I don't watch his show, and I have no idea what he talks about a lot of the time. But what I do know is that every time I turn it on, he's calling for someone else's son to go and die in a ditch somewhere for his interests. And I don't like people who are not advocates for peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, said Candace, who is far more intelligent than Ben will ever be. And she is completely right. He replied that rhetoric starting an argument with me when I said we should talk about peace. I say we should talk about peace. He calls for the death of civilians and somehow we're asking why my point of view is seen as abstract. It's insane. Why can't we all just sit down and say the fighting must end? Why can't we do that? 
Why can't we sit and say, nobody should be dying, let's stop using the most advanced military weaponry on the planet to blow the limbs off children? Why can't we say that without being deemed some why kind you, of terrorist why sympathizer why? or anti-Semite? It's you, insanity. Uh, Trump came along and didn't start a single war. He's the only one who didn't. And they're gonna come along him and say, make him a bad guy. When a new president comes in, it's just endless war and death and killing. Mm -hmm. Have you seen a dead body, Piers? Have you seen people lose a limb? It's disgusting. I know what's happening over there. Have I've, you seen that? I don't need to tell you about the, the parts of my history that I'm not prepared to share, Piers. You've but seen, you've to, seen I people said it to bed. I said people who've done their own fighting and seen their own violence and have seen people bleed out in the street from a stab wound are not going to be so, so smart and so quick to sit behind a desk and call for the death of innocent people. It's disgusting what's happening. I don't want anyone to die on either side. And when I come along as a peacemaker and say, this is insane, because he's a warmonger, because he has chosen uh, blinkers and sees one side of the argument and refuses to accept the humanity of Palestinians, he says I'm a bad person for calling for peace. Well, you know why? Because he'll probably listen to this interview and say, this guy can't even describe Hamas as terrorists. If Ben Shapiro thinks bad of And him, if you don't think what happened to the people in Israel on October the 7th is an act of terrorism... Did I not just say, then you are, I want all people then to you are just dying. You are just as partisan to one side as you believe Ben Shapiro did is I to the other. Did I not just say, I want all people to start dying? Stop dying. Pierce, don't interrupt this. It's two sentences. I want all people to stop dying. However, I understand what is going to happen when you create a pressure cooker. That is, my, that is my answer, and it's extremely professional. I don't want anyone to die, and because I don't want anyone to die, because I'm a peacemaker, because I'm a humanist, I understand you cannot lock people in an open-air prison for an undetermined period of time without provoking terrorism. So out of interest, what would you have done if you'd been Israel after October the 7th? That's a really interesting question, and I think there's people who are more qualified than me to answer. Given that Hamas last week said, we're going to try and do the same thing again and yeah. again and again, what would you do to defend the people of Israel? Good question. They have the Iron Dome, which is largely effective. I think that their border security is usually effective. It's very interesting that it wasn't on the So you would state. say they would do nothing then, other than tighten up security? I think if I was truthfully, I'll answer the question. If I was truthfully in charge of Israel, I would have found out how our border was penetrated. Mm -hmm. I would have made sure that was impossible to do. Mm -hmm. I would have had large con conversations and discourse during that period, which would probably take weeks to ensure that my border was impenetrable because we were at no genuine threat of a repeat attack. And then I would make it clear that there will be some repercussion unless unless there would be some repercussion unless we can come to peace terms. I don't think the well, Hamas doesn't want peace. Of course not. But I'm saying oh, that's, that's their fine. stated position. Of course, of course. So there's not many people. Okay, what I do? I would have found out first things first. I'm a man. So first things first you fix the problem. Okay. Our border's been penetrated. How do we make sure that doesn't happen again? Sure, of How course. did it happen? Internal investigation. Of course. Let's make sure the border is secure. Now our civilians are safe. Our civilians are safe, which buys us time. Let's have a conversation and see if we can actually reason with a mask. If we can't, then there might be a, uh, there might be then, some military then intervention. Then but there certainly wouldn't be bombing hospitals, crews missiling refugee camps. There wouldn't be any of the things that's going on now. Absolutely. You not. wouldn't try and attack this, the people that No, because this is a rushed and emotional response. Hmm. And that's what I would have prevented. I would have made sure as a man I didn't make a rushed and emotional response. So you'd be, more, you'd be more like Neville Chamberlain trying to do peace with the Nazis and Winston Churchill trying to kill them. Well, yeah, that's an interesting question. You're an appeaser, not a warrior. Well, I still think I'm a warrior, but I think that when you're a warrior, you have to be very capable and... Oh, but that's what Neville Chamberlain's view was. We, we should do peace with the Nazis. You have to be very understanding of your power and you have to use it responsibly. responsibly. Mm -hmm. And just like I said earlier, when I'm trying to be responsible about what I say to the young men of the world, I would understand as Israel, I must be responsible with my massive military might to make sure I don't kill civilians. And I would sit and try and make a measured response and I'd be a professional and I would t consider them human beings and I would secure my border and try and come up with a plan better than, oh no, I'm mad, I'm emotional now, let's go kill everyone. I think that's the wrong response, correct. I don't think, I don't think that's the right thing to do. We've spent a long time talking um, you're going to find out at some stage today or in the next few days whether you're going to get your possessions back. That yep. will either happen or not happen. But then there's likely to be a trial. Yep. And that will determine how you spend the next 10 years of your life, almost certainly, which is a sobering thought for anyone. Yep. When you look back on the whole arc mm -hmm. of the last few years, you know, you've expressed some regret because of your turning to Islam, your change in, in yep. your philosophy uh, from a religious perspective. You've acknowledged that some of the stuff you used to do was immoral. D do you look at the journey you've gone on here and think that in a way, notwithstanding the matrix and everything else, that maybe you yourself could have done things differently to oh, avoid absolutely. being in this position? Absolutely. I'm a man and I take absolute self-accountability. 
You have to, as a man, your superpower is looking in the mirror and understanding everything that happens to you, both good and bad, to a degree, is your fault. It could have all been influenced. I could have avoided all of this. I could have avoided the matrix attacks, or sorry, I could have avoided jail cell, if you don't let me use that term. I could have avoided all the negative press. I could have chosen to work in Starbucks and just stayed with nobody. I made choices that put me in this position. I take responsibility for them. I said things on the internet in a satirical way on videos that got 110 views when YouTube was brand new that I did not expect to become the most viral videos in the world because I didn't expect to become the most famous and known person on the planet. That's all true. I'm not saying I have no part to play in any of this. However, I can still say that I'm completely innocent. I can still say that it is only my fame and notoriety that has inspired the prosecution service to try and even put me in jail in the first place. I can still say that there's some unfair policing in the world depending on your political views. I can still say all of those things while accepting absolute responsibility for the situation I am in. Andrew Tate, thank you very much. Thank you, sir.